So hi, I'm Mark, this is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm gonna to bring you guys an update on my Pinter experience. Now, a few months ago, I did a review of the Pinter 2. And the Pinter 2, as a quick recap, is basically a way of making your own fresh beer or cider at home, just using one device and not needing all of the gear. It's a really simple process of brewing, and the idea is that anyone can just kind of pick one up and have a go. And in order to do this, they packed a load of tech into the Pinter to make it a really good experience. And in that review, I said I would bring you guys an update a few months later after I'd done a few more brews. If you want to watch that original video, I have put a link below. And the beer I brewed in that video was the Dark Matter, which was a kind of dark porter, which I was really happy with. Now in a few months since that video, I have done a whole variety of beers, but it's also been quite a journey with Pinter. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an update. I'm gonna talk about my experience of using a new Pinter 2.1 and share my kind of opinions on this a few months later after all of the turbulence the company has come through. I'm gonna try and keep this brief, but there is a lot to cram into this video. So let's start with what happened shortly after I posted that original review. So within about a week and a half of me posting that original review, there was a few different messages that started popping up in the Pinter Facebook group of people who were finding their Pinters were basically exploding. And this was because of the amount of pressure in the device, and basically the device couldn't handle the pressure you needed to brew with without kind of bursting its top. Now, thankfully no one was injured by any of these, but a few fridge doors came off. And what happened as a result of this is Pinter heard about it and they got in touch because people were obviously emailing them saying, my Pinter has just exploded. And they made the decision to get in touch with everyone and tell them to immediately start brewing on zero. What that means is the pressure dial on the back of a Pinter that goes from naught to five, five being the most pressure, zero being no pressure. Uh, people were being told to brew their beer on zero, which meant brewing beer with no pressure. And brewing beer with no pressure is absolutely fine if you like flat beer, which of course no one does. And at that point, Pinter asked people to give them a couple of weeks to do some investigations and they would be back in touch again. And sure enough, a couple of weeks later, they did get back in touch and they said, right, we think we've worked out what's going on. And I'm not gonna go into details, but according to Pinter, 0.4% of the Pinter 2s had a manufacturing defect. This meant the inside wasn't attached well enough and this was causing them to explode under the pressure. Explode is possibly slightly dramatic, they basically blew the top. Now, this wasn't something I experienced, my Pinter was still behaving fine, however, I was being a little bit more cautious with my brew pressures. So Pinter had emailed everyone, they said brew on zero, we'll come back to you an update, they came back with the cause of a problem, and they said what we're gonna do is we're gonna recall everyone's Pinter, and we're gonna make some fixes to it. And at that point, they got you to fill out a form, and then they gave you a kind of recall date. So some people started in July, mine was in August. And they said to people, in the meantime, you can keep brewing, but again, brew on zero. And really at that point, it was down to individuals about how much risk they wanted to take. And as someone who hadn't had any issues with my Pinter to date, I kept brewing on kind of just one below the recommended setting. So if it said two, I went for one, because I wanted to still have some carbonation in my beer. And as I hadn't had any issues with my Pinter when I'd used it at the proper settings, I felt like it was worth the risk. Luckily for me, uh, that risk was fine and nothing exploded. And then as the recall date got closer, Pinter revealed that actually what they'd be doing is instead of making a fix to everyone's Pinter, they would be calling Pinters back and sending you a new one. And they were just gonna send the core unit, they weren't gonna send a new tap and they weren't gonna send new hopper caps, you had to take a few of the accessories off. And I've gotta say fair play to them because my recall experience was really good. I got the email on the date that they said I get my recall email. I packaged it up, sent it off with DPD and within about 10 minutes of sending it off at my local parcel stop, I managed to get an email telling me how to go and redeem the code for the new one, which I had within two days. And in that respect, I can't fault their customer service at all, although I do think they're perhaps not as transparent as they should be. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about that uh, as I go on. So then as people's Pinter 2s began to arrive and all of this activity comes on the Facebook group as well, what I was beginning to see was that people were finding that their beers weren't coming out the tap very well with the new Pinter 2.1. So they're kind of fixed Pinter, if you like. And there's people on the Facebook group who've created kind of like their own pressure valves, which monitor the pressure in these. And basically what they were finding was that actually these new Pinters were not hitting even really the pressure they needed to, to make beer. This meant that Pinter kind of snuck out a little update saying actually we need to change the carbonation settings for our beers. So they did a new graph and so on the packet where you might have brewed at two before, this would now be up to four. And then the kind of, I guess the final piece in a puzzle in terms of this kind of update was a few weeks ago, Pinter did a kind of Zoom question and answer session with their CEO, Ralph. I think that's his name. 
and all of the questions in this uh, Q&A had been selected by the community in advance um, and he kind of worked through them but spent most time talking about the tap. Now the Pinter 2 tap is really interesting because it's basically a coil inside the tap. And this coil is basically designed to lower the pressure of your beer as it passes through so that what you get at the other end isn't a glass of froth. And what I found with my first few beers from the original Pinter 2 was that actually this worked pretty well. The first glass was pretty frothy and then it kind of calmed down as time went on. And this is actually a really innovative thing because it means that you can keep your beer fresh and carbonated but also have it last a longer time. So Pinter say carbonated beer will last for up to 30 days. However, in lowering the pressure in order to fix the pinters that were exploding, they've kind of gone a little bit too far and lowered it too much. This is why people were being told to take it from a two to a four for brewing and all sorts of kind of mixed messages going out. And this included one message where they said, if your beer isn't coming through your tap, turn your pressure valve to zero, open it to the final pour position, and then turn your pressure valve back on again. Now this is fine, except at that point, air has been let into your beer and its time is numbered and so you need to drink it much quicker than you would if it still had pressure in it. And so this kind of became a thing where this wasn't really what they should say because it meant the products they were now offering didn't do what they claimed it did. So in this question and answer, the video for which has never gone live, the CEO basically said, yes, there is a problem with the Pinter 2.1, so the fixed Pinters and the tap. And this is because we've lowered the pressure and therefore it can't get through this tap anymore. And they shared on that video that they are making a new tap that will kind of be a bit more adjustable and that they're gonna be testing that in the coming months. And so that's where we are up to with the Pinter updates and mistakes. And it feels a little bit like they've gone from kind of one problem to another problem to another problem. And as someone who has seen companies like Apple make mistakes in the past with the iPhone 4 and the Signal, it's really interesting to watch how companies handle this. So Apple, when the Signal was dropping out on the iPhone 4, were in flat out denial to start with. There's stories of people emailing Steve Jobs saying, when I hold my iPhone like this, the signal drops out. And Steve would just reply with, well, don't hold it like that then. And Pinter haven't been in that flat out denial. They have responded to these concerns and addressed things. And it's a mammoth task replacing everyone's devices. The problem is, I think they've reacted too quickly and not spent enough time developing things. That doesn't mean that the Pinter is a bad product. And I'm gonna come on to that shortly because I've still been getting some really good beer about that and I want to share some positives at the end of this video. What it does mean, however, is I think that they react too quickly, they've tried to push things out too quickly and they've not tested things properly. As a result of that, the Pinter 2.1s don't quite have enough pressure a lot of the time. A lot of people, myself included, have also found that it doesn't turn to the five setting anymore, it gets to about four and a half. And of course, in lowering the pressure and making some adjustments to the manufacturing process in order to make the device safe, what should have happened is they should have then tested it extensively. However, the problem with trying to turn something around and send it out to people within a matter of months is that you don't have time to do that properly. And they've kind of balanced this kind of uh, line between the community and people who've bought their product who want a working product and actually producing something that does what it should and doing that quickly. And I think there's something to be said for the speed at which they've responded, but I think the sacrifice has been some of the quality. And what that means is that my last beer, I had about a pint left in it that I just couldn't get out. So after all of that kind of potted history of the last few months of Pinter, is the Pinter 2 still a good product? And I want to start off by talking about the beers. So in my original Pinter 2, I got three brews out of it. I got the Dark Matter, which I made in my original video and I was really happy with. It was a really nice stout, really nicely carbonated and really nice to drink right up until the end. I then made a public house on a slightly lower carbonation setting after they come out telling people to brew on zero. I brewed it on one instead of two. And again, it was a really nice, easy to drink beer and I was really happy with it and I got it down all the way to the end. And then the third one I did was one of their ciders and I just went for the standard cider. And again, I brewed this on a lower setting than recommended, but still with some pressure on just to make it a bit fizzy. And again, I was really happy with it as a really nice cider and I'm not a big cider drinker, um, but it tasted really nice. It smelt really apple-y and I was really happy with it. And so my three beers or ciders that I'd done with my original Pinter 2 were brilliant and I'd certainly recommend them. And then since having my replacement Pinter, I've done two beers. I've done the Tropical Debate, which was my first one with the hopper. And then I've also done a Stars and Stripes, which is a kind of American pale. 
And the first one of these was the American Pale. And again, with the new carbonation setting where it's up on four, it was a really nice beer. It tasted good, it had plenty of carbonation, and I had brewed it on that higher carbonation setting recommended for the Pinter 2.1. I did, however, have some issues with the tap with this beer and found that I had to pour it straight away on the 90 degree final pour position, which meant it was very frothy every time. And at that point, I had a choice of whether I turned the carbonation to zero and let air into my beer and had limited time with it, or if I just kind of poured it into a jug and let it sit for a bit. Uh, I went for the latter so I could drink it over a longer period of time. And again, it was a really nice beer, possibly my favorite one so far with the Pinter. And it's also time to say, actually, it wasn't the pinter's fault when it came to pour. And actually cleaning the tap is probably the most tricky part of a pinter. And it's really easy when you clean the tap to kind of trap one of those little coils. And so what I'd actually done when I put the pinter back together the previous time is I'd managed to trap one of those coils. So I blocked my own tap. So it was nothing to do with the pressure and it's to do with the way that I put the tap back together. And so in using this for kind of four or five months now, I'd say that the key thing when you're doing your pinter is to make sure you're really careful when you put your tap back together and make sure you test that it still can flow afterwards. And then my second beer, which I've just finished on the new pinter, was the Tropical Debate. Now this was probably my least favorite of beers from pinter so far, and not because it was a bad beer. Um, it was perfectly drinkable, it was nice and refreshing, it just didn't have as much flavor as I'd hoped. Um, this time around the tap did pour, I got a nice amount of head on my first pint, and then I found that head kind of dropped off. I was still able to pour it on the 45 degree pour position up until about pint six, and then I had to take it that little bit further, which I think was okay. Um, I found it had plenty of carbonation until the end, although probably not as much as I'd have liked. And I think this is probably where this new tap pinter are working on, which is essentially gonna be a more adjustable one without the coil, um, is gonna be a much better tap for people to use. I think that's gonna work better with the lower pressure of the pinter. And so I'm five beers into my pinter, and I'm pretty happy with it as a whole. It's produced some nice beers. I've only had one poor problem, and that was because of me and how I put the tap back together. And the only real issue I've had is getting it onto the brewing dock at times at the start. And I can find this really difficult to get it on. Now, lots of people on the Facebook group talk about using Brewer's Lube, which I haven't got. I've just used a little bit of Frylight, which I've put on my finger and then put it around the edge of the brewing dock just to help it fall into place. And I find that this works every time. All of that aside, is the Pinter 2 still a good product? And should you buy one? And I wanna stand by what I said in my original review. And in my original review, I said it was a really good product and it made really good beer. And I do stand by that. The only thing I'd say is that I don't think it is quite for the beginners that they kind of make out that it is for. I think if you are hoping to get something and create easy beer uh, without any effort at all, then you might be disappointed if you pick one up. I think the thing I've learned about it is that you need to have a bit more patience with it. You need to be quite careful when putting a tap back together and you certainly need to shake it around a bit more than the 30 seconds recommended to get your beer mixed. And so I think my updated review would be to say, actually, if you do want to be able to make your own beer at home in a relatively simple way, then a pinter is certainly worth looking at. Um, at the moment, it's on offer for £79, which is a really good price, especially when, if you start a subscription at that point, that includes a free pack of beer and two free glasses. Um, if you do want to pick one up, I have put a link below. And if you use that link, you will also get an extra £20 off, which will bring it down to £59 for a pinter, at which point I think is really good value. Um, I'm really excited to see where Pinter goes in the coming months because I think they've been through a tricky place and I think actually they're beginning to engage a bit more with the community so make sure you join the Facebook group uh, if you do get a Pinter. I think they're learning from their mistakes which is so important for a company um, and I'm really interested to see what this new tap is going to be like and I'll make sure I do an update uh, as and when that tap happens. And I think the tap in particular is probably going to be the thing that makes it even better than it currently is because that tap will allow you to pour at any position without having to worry about it forcing through this straw and in turn that will also make the cleaning process much easier. And of course, that will also mean the reassembly is easier because you won't have to worry about how you're catching that straw when you put it back in um, to its kind of container. Um, I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, do stick them below. I will answer any question below completely honestly and share my personal experience. Uh, this is a product I bought myself. It's something I use myself in my spare time for fun. No one has asked me to make this video. No one's paid me to make this video. I have no affiliation with Pinter. I'm just sharing my own opinion. And as with every product, people have different experiences. And for me, the experience has generally been really good. And then finally, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you guys again soon.